Hello! Sorry, I'm a little bit late for homeschool happy hour. Let me flip. left my glasses on. Hey everyone. Selena, hey. Hey Kelly. There's Jessica. Hey Melanie. I'm learning names. Yes, so it took me, I was a little bit late today because there were so many amazing um, periscopes today that I have a whole stack of shout outs. Um, hey. I was at, um, Tuesday is our co-op day, we only go some Tuesdays, but it happened to be a co-op morning, so I couldn't watch any until lunchtime, and so I'm spending my whole lunch watching. I found out you can watch one on your iPad and one on your phone at the same time, because I was like, oh, I want to see as many as I can before a happy hour. Yes, it is, it is, so, um... There are two that I know that I'm going to love, and I'm waiting to watch it tonight when I can relax. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was like, I wonder if this works. Um, so I wasn't like, I was like, I need to watch this, so see which ones I wanted to commit myself to that I knew I would enjoy for my own benefit so that I could share with you guys. So, um, oh. Let me see, I don't have my clipboard, but I guess I'll introduce myself. I am Hilda Rebecca, and I do blog, but it's new. I used to blog a long time ago, and I have so much stuff. You can see my profile and see blogs from like 10 years ago, and nine, and eight, seven, six years ago. But I do most of my social networking on Instagram, and we are a Charlotte Mason homeschool. And if you scroll back through my Instagram, you can see all kinds of stuff that we do with a lot of family stuff mixed, mixed in. It's my scrapbook, my digital scrapbook. And I just found about scoping. This is my fourth scope ever, I think. And I'm really, really enjoying the Homeschool Scopes community. Um, so if you're not a member there, please join and um, share the love. This is, oh yes, origami is very, very fun. So this is my catch, so my, they're there, and I, I'm new to all of this, so I don't understand all the saving and sharing. I found out my computer was saving my scopes in Quick Player, and I don't even know how that happened, but it did. <laughs> so anyway, I'm new to homeschool scopes. I'll, real quick, I am a, a homeschool family, five children. This is our 16th year. And like I said before, Charlotte Mason mostly, you know, inspired um, homeschool. And I am currently co-schooling to my two oldest grandchildren with my daughter-in-law, Jess, who is a member here too. And um, I found out, funny story, um, my first scope or so, All the Hearts, I found out it's my grandchildren giving me all the love on the hearts. <laughs> so I said, keep it up. I love it. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with some shout outs today. And I do have a resource to share at the end. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's Allison, it's Kaylee and Carter. They're like, Mimi, we gave you hearts. So um, anyway, yes, yeah, scope on how to do all the technical stuff. I think there's some files in the homeschool scope pages about that. I've briefly read through them, but I'm more of a learn as I go and push the button and see what happens type person, so I, I think I've got the gist of it. Okay, okay, so maybe we can find that on their catch, on Selena, on Selena's catch. Yes, owls. Yep, I really like owls. Hey, our little schoolhouse, I've seen your handle a lot of times. I might have you, I, I know a lot of the, hey Lisa, yes, all day, every day, yes, I'm a shout out to you, and um, yes, I love owls, I actually saw my first um, great horned owl a couple of years ago at a museum that we volunteer at, and I later went back and found where they were nesting, and found some owl pellets, and it was really, really cool, anyway, um, the first shout out I want to get give is Delighted in Life. 
I think someone's already mentioned her, but it was just so good. I've been watching Mary, not before seven, Mary's um, party. Um, yes. See, this is why I was a little late, because I was drawing pigs. <laughs> um, Mary does the parties with the Braid Rider stuff. Yes, and she did. She kept on saying it was just so simple, such a simple party. And I'm thinking, this is amazing. This is really awesome. If you call this simple, I want to see what um, detailed is. It was just a lot of fun. So check out her Charlotte's Web Party for inspiration on how to celebrate the ending of a wonderful book with your family. So she was a lot of fun. And then another new scoper who started about the same time I did and I followed her on Instagram and she's somewhere where they still have snow, which I really love seeing the, all the people that still have snow because I love, I'm a, I'm a northerner at heart and I, I miss the snow from my childhood. But um, Liz, she did a read aloud tea. She was inspired by yours, Allison, and some other people. And she said she had not done this before. It was only like her third scope. And it, it, her children joined in and were saying what they liked about it and talking about the books. And it was just a really nice, encouraging. If you want to see it, how easy and fun and fulfilling a tea time can be with your family, you know, catch the scope. I don't know if she has a catch or not, but she should still be live. She did it this afternoon. Then another one I watched live at lunchtime was from Mama Maria Six. She did a beautiful, beautiful scope about the devotional books that she has used with her children throughout the past three years. And then, yes, yes, and then I know you got a little off sidetrack, but it was just so sweet and so beautiful, and it was so... It was just good to hear, you know, she really showed your heart of, you know, why you were doing the devotions. And um, I like that it was very boy, if you have boys and you want to know about devotions to read with them, they were great, great devotions for boys. Some that, a couple that my boys read when they were younger. Um, <laughs> yes, it was a beautiful, beautiful scope. Um, very good inspirational scope. And um, another one, I've never seen this person and I am, our house is a, um, my husband has a mind for math. The rest of us, no, it's just not there. So math is the necessary evil in our home. <laughs> so we just get through it. But she told her story about after, um, no, I didn't research. I just sat and watched scopes all afternoon. <laughs> Allison, so, um. This is her very inspirational story about how math was a struggle and her child was just crying and I'm not good at math and it turned out to be, it, you know, it flipped after they homeschooled us their favorite story. So, um, yes, this is a nice, if you want an encouraging math scope, this is one to do. And then one more shout out that it's not necessarily homeschool, but I am new to the <laughs> I am new to the bullet journal world myself. I did little checkoffs because if you are the type of person that wants to check something off, you need to research bullet journals. It'll make you really, really happy. Make you smile to be able to check off boxes. But um, I don't remember her first name. I don't remember her first name, so if anybody knows it. But she actually made, yes, Rebecca. Yes, that's my middle name. I should remember that. But, um, she made a binder. I was really intrigued. She told the story about how she got this leather and dyed the leather and made her own little binder. <coughs> Excuse me. But she shows in detail her bullet journals and she's braver than me. She showed like mistakes and I'm just like, oh, I don't even want to look at my own mistakes, much less show, you know, the whole world. But she did and it was very encouraging and she showed how she had set up a plan traveler's journal. Yeah, has she'd set up a plan and it didn't work with her, so she changed it. And that's, I'm very new to bullet journaling. I've only been doing it since January, mid-January. And I have only changed it up a little bit because I'm still getting into the habit of doing it every day. But it has already has drastically helped me accomplish more just by having that one place to write everything down instead of trying to keep it all in my head. So... <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> and then this is my old list that I posted on another one of a lot of some, these two, um, absolute favorites. So Allison, I'm going to watch your tea spinner party one later because I wanted to save that whenever I could 
enjoy it. And Leah's, Leah did one. She does all the Charlotte Mason, um, Charlotte Mason show is what she calls it. But I can't wait to watch hers. Hers is the five things the CM method is not. So I'm really looking forward to watching that tonight. Yes, so good, good. And um, Mary, like I said, her last party was the Lord of the Flies party. And it's like, how can you make the Lord of the Flies fun? But it looked amazing. And um, Diona did the free library right here, all day, every day. She did the free little library which was really, really neat. And I have heard about them and considered putting one out in my front yard. And I was wondering if I could put that by the side of the road, right out here in my little, you know, country town without even a stoplight in our town. <laughs> I wonder if I'd get any people coming. And um, Amy, I didn't see if Andy did something today. Um, Amy did her, I haven't been able to catch her series about overcoming homeschool struggles. I'm hoping I can watch those one weekend on catch. Yes, one stoplight. Good. Yay. We don't have a single stoplight. We do have a police station. My mother's town doesn't even have a police station. So we have a police station. Um, and the life on PEI, she didn't do one today. Um, but Melanie, Melanie, yours was just so funny. <laughs> like to me, it was funny because it made me think of whenever mine were younger and I would get wigged out about the same thing you know stacking the dishes on the counter and she had a very genius and unique way to stop your children from stacking your dirty dishes on the counter instead of putting them in the dishwasher so you have got to catch that because it is it's awesome it's awesome it was like the putting the box big boxes around the bottom of the Christmas tree to keep the toddlers from grabbing the ornaments is what it made me think of. So anyway, that, that was really, really neat. So that's my shout outs for the day. So if you need to see any, see them again, let me know if any of them you missed because I'm trying to go fast because I want to share a, um, a resource with you. I'm going to have to take a sip of water. Okay, so my accent. <laughs> On my very first introduction scope, I told the crazy story about my accent. So I won't go into it again because it's a long one, but it's, it's crazy. So I know there's somebody, I think, I don't remember who it is because I'm still learning names, but someone is going through the five love languages on here. Does anybody know who's going through that? I don't... <laughs> I don't know who, I don't know, yes, okay, so Tara, so I don't know names, but anyway, I read this when my children were younger, and you know, when I was first married, I was like, oh yes, that makes very much sense, and I'm like, okay, well this is my love language, and I'm sort of ashamed that I think, like, I think I'm sort of two different love languages, but one of them is, is, um, like, where you like people to do stuff for you and I feel bad about that but that's just the way God made me so no I haven't read the one for kids but what I wanted to tell you is that if you've read the one for children or read the regular one and you have teenagers make sure you get this book for teens but I'll tell you in in a nutshell what this will tell you and that is that you may have their love languages all figured out and guess what? When they're teenagers, it can change. And whenever I read that, I'm sitting here reading this and I was like, well, I know all about the five love languages. And then I'm like, what do you mean? Their love language can change. I have it all figured out. And it just light bulbs started coming off of my head with the way the children were. Yeah, yes, yes, we've got it all figured out. And whenever they're, you know, they're, they're going through the transition from child to adult, you know, and, and you know, I really... I don't, I tell my children they're not allowed to be teenagers. They have to go from child to young adult to adult. You know, they don't get a free pass on acting crazy just because they're teenagers. <laughs> so they laugh at me. We laugh about that. Yes. So it's like their, um, their love language can change. Yes. Act of, acts of service. That's it. That's it. And then I'm touchy feely. I have to kiss everybody and everything. So. And acts of acts of service. Um, 
Oh, the movie Inside Out. Yes. Okay. So, um, if you've read that and you have teenagers, make sure you at least read a summary on this book. But that's in a nutshell. They can change. So be looking for that whenever they get get older and they're start they're starting to look inward and see who they are and to to you know find out who they are in this world. So just a good thing to remember. So sort of on that same line, that's not the resource I wanted to share. Sort of on that same line, not with love languages, but with yes, I do too. But with um Okay, bye, bye Olivia. So, about personality. Um, I read a lot of books when my children were younger about how they learn and their learning style and their love languages, but there's also, you know, that personality. Hey, that's, that's the morning girl, Amy, yes. Um, this is the book, I don't know if any, anybody's ever seen it or not, it's The Treasure Tree, helping the kids find their personality, understand and find their personality. And I read this to the children, you know, several years ago. Hello in Nebraska, Carrie. And um, then again when they got older, and I actually sat down this afternoon and read it again with my grandchildren for the first time. And it, there's four best friends in the story. There's the lion and the golden retriever, the silly otter and the beaver. And each of the animals in the story have a definite personality. The lion is a leader and makes decisions quickly. The otter is just the goofball, the life of the party, just, you know, always positive. The golden retriever is the sensitive, tender hearted, caring, um, quiet one. And the beaver is the thinker, the, the, um, like sort of the engineer mind, the thinker, figuring it out, noticing all the details. So their personalities are placed. So you read this story about these animals um, trying to find four keys so that they can get into the treasure tree. And I won't tell you the whole story, but it, it all works out. They go on four different adventures to find four different keys and they get to the treasure tree. And, excuse me, and um. At the end, you see how their personalities played in finding each of those keys. And what's so great is that at the end of the book, there is a personality checklist. And I just made copies so that we could keep them. And you ask the children the questions. It was a little bit harder with the younger ones because, you know, like... Let me, so one of the ones I asked Carter, who is my grandson that I um, school every day, is like, you're supposed to read this out and they're supposed to say yes or no. Like, is a peacemaker doesn't like it when others argue? And he was like, oh yes, I don't like it when other people argue, which he doesn't. But he's not a peacemaker. He argues back with them to stop arguing. <laughs> so it's a, a little bit harder for the younger kids to understand. He knows he hates arguing, but he doesn't, un he doesn't understand that being a peacemaker, peacemaker is trying to lovingly convince the people to stop arguing or what have you. So, and he, he tested high on the beaver scale. So he's a beaver. So whenever you get done, and he's, he's partial lion. I was all over the place all over the place, um, but my son, Daniel, my oldest that's home now, was part lion, but he tested high on the golden retriever. He's my Pooh Bear, yes. So yes, I'll show you the book again. It is The Treasure Tree. So now we have that for reference, and one of the things is, is now that Whenever they have a conflict, which they will, especially the two littles, we can remember their personality and tell the lion that likes to be in charge of everything to remember the tender heart of the golden retriever or to remember that the, the beaver, you know, has to think things through and wants to be prepared for everything, you know, doesn't just go on the adventure really fast without thinking like the otter. The beaver has to plan and decide what to pack in his backpack for the adventure. You know, so it helps us to see 
the other person's personality and to not hold them accountable to our own personality whenever we're dealing with them. So I'm looking forward to talking to the grandchildren for the next few weeks and seeing when their lion or their beaver or their golden retriever comes out. And that book is based on the Gary Smalley. This is so old. I got this book. I think our dog chewed on it. But this is a very old copy of the book, The Two Sides of Love, that the treasure tree is based on. So if you want to read the grown-up version of that train of thought with the personalities, this is the book to read for that. So, oh, sorry I moved it. I don't know if someone got the screenshot. So if you need to take another one. Yay, th this is old school books. This is... I don't remember when this was published, but it was it was a long time ago. Um, yeah, this was first published in 1990. <laughs> so these are old books, but they're still still good books. So um, I don't know what else to talk about. I do um, oldies but goodies. Yes, yes. Um, I do want to show. I'm still. This is my third or fourth Periscope. And I do want to do more. I really enjoy doing the leapfrog one, the instructional one. And I asked my friends, especially my Instagram friends, if there was anything that I'm posting that they'd like to know more about. And I have my in my bullet journal, my Periscope ideas. So if you follow me on Periscope and see, I mean on Instagram, and see anything we do and you want to see a scope about it, you know, let me know. I'll definitely do some Charlotte Mason inspired ones eventually. I'm just getting my feet wet. Um, I think the next one I'm going to do is a tips on some wood burning. Just simple tips. Not totally 100% how to because I'm new at that hobby craft or handicraft too. But I thought I'd do a little tips on wood burning and just show you what I've learned so far. How to get the wood ready and, and what to do. So, um... Yes, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. We like to do a lot of handicrafts here. So, um, and bird resources. I know Allison shared a lot of the great nature resources. We're really big on nature study here, too. So, all right, guys. Well, I don't know if I've... I've never done happy hour before. I don't know if I've done it. Thank you. I don't know if I've done it long enough or not, but... Um, like I said, join Homeschool Scopes if you're not on it. And um, I will show you the shout outs one more time because I see people are still joining. So if y'all don't mind, if you've already seen it and you want to go off, that's fine. But I want to show you the shout outs one more time because some people just joined recently. But the Charlotte's Web Party was absolutely adorable. And um, makes you start thinking about how you can do parties on other books is simply she said simply but it was amazing and um the liz did her read aloud tea i really like that her children joined in and shared what they liked about it and were so excited about the books that they read um so that was a really really fun scope i think we all anybody that does tea should do a scope about it so everybody can see the different set, setups that we all have for tea time. Um, the kids' devotionals, um, what they've used for the past three years for their devotionals, and especially, I, she didn't say it, but I say especially for boys, they were very boy um, friendly. Um, so if you have boys and devotionals, and a math one, an encouraging one about after a crazy public school. Um, sad time with math to be able to turn it around and relax through math in your homeschool that was a good one and then just a personal one if you like bullet journals or don't know what it's about and you like to check off list and you need to keep up with stuff that way you know watch your scope about bullet journals and research it if you like that so anyway again I hope I didn't do it too short Yes, see you next time, but um, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to, and definitely join Homeschool Scopes if you haven't already. Alright guys, hey there, 
I think I'm going to sign off unless anybody has any questions or um, anything else they'd like to say. Again, the resource I shared was this cute book. Yes. Oh, Homeschool Scopes TV. I don't even know what that is. I guess that's where the Facebook page. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> Still learning the technical side. Well, the Facebook group is Homeschool Scopes TV. Oh, so I need to put a TV dot TV at the end of my sign. Is that what you're saying? Okay, I gotcha. So the treasure tree is the, the resource I shared. So, well, I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to turn this around and um, go do some, go outside with all the grandchildren and enjoy this beautiful weather. So, oh, I see people are joining late. I'm about to sign off. I guess I talked too fast. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. I'm going to flip this. Just being, a, oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Gotcha. Thank you so much.